So we're gonna be calling Shannon Hyde. Downey, oh, this is your team. <laughs> please meet us at Dairy Queen. We miss you, Downey. Please. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Another episode of The Shannon Show, the best military kids podcast on the internet, except except for today, actually, except for today, <laughs> because we're going to share that title with my friend Gracie. She's coming on the podcast. Um, I did I did a show with you a little bit like a few weeks ago. Yeah. And um, yeah, having her on The Shannon Show now, and we're having a lot of fun talking about military kids stuff and her upbringing and, you know, all things that have to do with the wonderful community we live in. Gracie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, uh, it is my pleasure. Very happy to have you here. I am very impressed with your podcast. I mean, you just, you have like, what, 40, 48, 49 episodes now? Yeah, this week was yeah. 50. So mm-hmm. 50, there you go. If the big, big milestone. Zero. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, obviously, um, I know firsthand how much work it is. Uh, it's yes. something that um, it's kind of overlooked in a lot of aspects because, like, whenever you're receiving the content, it's just like you know, it's you don't really think about necessarily the work that goes into it. But producing a podcast, uh, you're doing all the jobs. You're writing the shows. You're producing. You're editing. You're uploading. You're you know posting it. So it's a lot of work. Yes, for sure. And mm-hmm. I mean, thankfully, my dad helps me and he does the editing yeah. <laughs> stuff because I could not do that. I'm not tech savvy at all. Um, but yeah, it's so much work. And then with college and, you know, life on top yeah, of it, it up. and a job, like <laughs> it's, it's a lot. Uh, yeah, like, it's a lot oh, yeah, to balance. Real life. <laughs> yes, real life happens. Like you have to keep going. And sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, everything happens. You just got to roll with it. Yeah. So what was your inspiration for your podcast? Obviously, this Grace of Military Child podcast, you can find it pretty much everywhere from what I've seen. So what what was your inspiration getting started, obviously focused on military kids? Yeah. So my mom was the one who suggested that I do it. And so um, because there's really nothing, there's not a lot for military kids out there. Like there's really not. Um, Mm -hmm. A lot of attention is focused on the service members. And then, um, of course, spouses come next. Um, and they don't really even get much attention anyways. And so, I mean, now they're mm-hmm. starting to finally get a little bit more and more now. Um, but there's still nothing for military kids. Like we're just, we're just there. We're just dependents. We're falling around, yeah. you know, things like that. And a lot of people don't take into consideration what we actually go through, um, the trauma, the stress, mm-hmm. you know, um, and, you know, talking to you a couple weeks ago your story is completely different than mine and you know mine's yeah. completely different than everyone else's and you know yours is completely different than anyone else's so you it takes a little bit extra to understand a military child and not a lot of people understand that so that was kind of the basis of starting it um mm-hmm. just giving giving military kids a platform to be able to understand other military kids and connect with other military kids, and then also just giving, like, civilians a insight to our lives. Of course, they're not going to be able to fully understand what we go through because you have to live it to know it, but kind of giving them an inside view of what, what we go through on a daily basis. Yeah, and you mentioned it, just how diverse the military community itself is, and, like, military yes. kids, like, that title it applies to all of us, and we all share that, but the lives we live are all very different, just inherent on the lifestyle, like, we're moving around all these different places that no two kids are really going to have the same path, right. so it is really cool that you need a podcast or something similar where kids can really share their story specifically, you know, something where they can really have the platform and just talk about it from their perspective, because it's very anecdotal, I feel like. You can't, you can't make a whole lot of generalizations. It's really hard to talk about it broadly sometimes because it's just, it's really different for everyone. So I think that's a great thing. Um, You can just have a podcast. It's a perfect platform for it. Yeah. And some military kids, you know, they love moving around. They, Mm -hmm. they love doing all the things and uh, they struggle with different things. And some, some struggle with just the idea of moving, Mm -hmm. you know, for me, it was having my dad gone. That was a struggle for me. Yeah, And then, you know, being, going and doing moves and stuff. I only moved twice. So I was kind yeah. of, I didn't have that constant move, but mm-hmm. those two were a struggle for me. So, you know, everyone has their own struggles and some people embrace it different than others. And so, yeah. you know, just that community of knowing that everyone's different, everyone experiences different mm-hmm. things is important too. 
Right. You mentioned having your dad gone for some time. When was the first time that you remember him having to leave or leave for an extended period of time? Because I know that we grew up in a similar time where, you know, deployments were frequent. It was just something that we kind of were used to. Yeah. So my dad had a seven year break in service. And so uh, when he, when I was born in 2002 and then he retired, he I always say medically retired. He did not medically yeah. retire then. <laughs> he medically discharged in 2003. Um, he did, obviously I was not old enough to remember this, but gotcha. he was stateside deployed when I was born. Mm -hmm. um, he was on a stateside deployment. He was able to be there when I was born because my mom had a good doctor who was prior military and understood um, and made sure he was there. But I mean, obviously I don't remember that. And then with him having that seven year break, you know, he was yeah. always there. Um, he had like a normal job. He was a corrections officer in the Cuyahoga County Sheriff's Department. And then he got back in, in 2010. Um, so then at that point he re-enlisted. So he re-enlisted wow. into psychological operations. He did, he was an MP in, mm -hmm you know, 2000, early 2000s. And then he re-enlisted into psychological operations. So it was definitely, he had to go through all the training, the schooling, yeah. things like that. So those were like my early times of him being gone was mm -hmm. him like going to trainings. So, you know, weekends, week. Um, the first thing I remember that kind of stands out among them all Okay, so I'm a big fan of school. <laughs> I like going to school. Yes. I like learning. Um, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was a big deal to me, bigger than it actually should have been, but it was a big deal to me that he was missing my last day of school. It was like mm. my second or third grade year. Gotcha. And so it was a big deal that he missed that because he was gone for a month. And mm -hmm. so like that's probably like the first thing I remember. So he was gone yeah. for a month. And it was in June because I missed that last day of school. And I mean, it's not a big deal as we mm. look back at it now. It's just, you know, it's not my last, it's not my yeah, last Yeah, obviously, last but in the school. time, like it feels like but a big in the deal, time, of course. Yeah, it yeah. was a big thing. Um, mm. And then he deployed in, like I said, that was probably second or third grade. Mm -hmm. I think more towards second. Um, but then he deployed in 2011 in August. Gotcha. And that was the mm -hmm. first deployment. It was supposed to be 400 days and he was supposed to get back. That's a that's like long the time. rest. Yeah. It's a long deployment. Than usual. It was to Afghanistan and like the rest of his unit came back in July, but he was injured overseas. And so he came back in November for recovery and things like that. Wow. So that was like the first, like, you know, big, mm -hmm. the big time with him gone. And that was about four months that he was gone in, right. uh, in country. Gotcha. And how does your family, because I know that everyone kind of reacts differently whenever you have a parent, you know, not in the household. That's just a big, regardless if you're military or not, that's just a yeah. big thing to not have around whenever your kid is just a parent to suddenly not be there anymore. Um, how did your family adapt to not having your dad around? I mean, like, that's just, who did you lean on? Did you look for outside help or was it more of an internal, we're going to get through this? Yeah. So... In the early days when he mm. was like training and, you know, because he was reserved, he uh, didn't have like the full like work day, like a normal, you know, active duty soldier would. Um, he had the training or I can't even remember what it's called right now. He had one weekend a month that he would be gone for. Um, yeah, I can't even remember what it's called right now. <laughs> no, you're fine, you're I fine. I probably should remember, but I don't. No, um, small details. So he had one weekend a month that he was gone. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm pretty sure most of the time he was like, I think he was there for like the night, like he would come back home. Yeah. Um, and he was just gone for like the day. Um, but there were probably some that he was gone like the entire weekend, like mm -hmm. night and day. Um, but so those days... Like I said, it was just a weekend. So my mom mm -hmm. kind of made those weekends fun. Like we'd go to the zoo or um, just do something yeah. to kind of keep us occupied. Mm -hmm. And I only have one sibling. So I have one younger sister. Gotcha. And so it was Same. it was nice because it was like a small family. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have like, you know, hundreds of kids running around. Yeah. 
you know, keep occupied. Um, but then when he was gone for like a month or uh, we'll go with the deployment because that was yeah. definitely a big thing. Um, you know, my mom obviously had to step up and, you know, yeah. kind of fill her shoes and his shoes of, obviously, yeah. you know, all of that. And so there were definitely times where, you know, I think it was hard for her to kind of mm -hmm. be a mom in a sense, be a dad and, you know, take care of the entire house and, you know, do her life. Cause she had a job too. And she was going to school. So yeah. she had a lot going it's a on lot, too. Yeah. yeah. And then um, for me, because I am the oldest, mm -hmm. you know, it's that step up. like Yeah, some more responsibility. Right. And I mm -hmm. was nine when he deployed. So it was that, it was very much that you have to step up, take a little bit more responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, I remember my dad gave us little cards before he deployed. And in mine, yeah. um, I don't even think I have the actual card anymore. But he put like, you know, help your mom out and like, you know, mm -hmm. kind of more or less telling me like, you're going to have to step up and, you know, yeah. fill up, fill some void. And so that was definitely hard. And then, you know, my sister. I mean, that's just a big message to give to a kid. It's like, that's something yeah. that's kind of overlooked and you have to grow up so fast when you have a parent deployed. It's right. just, and it's all just really rapid. Yeah. You, you don't know what's going to happen. Like, mm -hmm. you know, they say that he was coming home in 400 days, but I mean, you don't know if like, you know, I mean, in our case, we had the injury happen. And so you, you mm -hmm. have to take it day by day with that. And who, who knows, like it could have ended up getting extended or and I think maybe it did. I don't know, but yeah. it could have gotten extended. Like you kind of have to fly by the seat of your pants at that point mm -hmm. or whatever, however that phrase goes <laughs> yeah. you have to kind of no, take you're absolutely it day right. by day. And whenever you're nine years old, like the concept of 400 days, like, I feel like it doesn't always really compute. It just seems like forever. Like, I don't, yeah, and, I don't think if you have told me at the time, you know, 400 days, I'd be like, okay, like that's like, I don't even know what I would think. Like, this is crazy to tell a kid, like your dad's going to be gone for over a year just, and then they just drop you off and like, whatever you move to next. I don't know. Yeah. Just, it's crazy and like stuff. missing Christmas and, you know, yeah. the big holidays that, you know, mm. you typically spend with your family or you like, you'd think you'd spend with your family. Um, you know, you miss those. Yeah. Like my, um, they were talking about him coming home for Easter. Cause it was around like, you know, it Easter was happening. My mom's birthday was around that time. My birthday was around that time. He would be coming home like for good around my sister's birthday. So like, it just seemed like it was a right time for him to come home, but then he'd miss Thanksgiving, Christmas, uh, yeah. New Year's, like, mm -hmm. you know, all those big holidays and little holidays in between, like he'd miss out on all of that. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's definitely a different thing that a lot of people don't understand. Yeah. Absolutely. I feel like that's a thing that's very common. It's like you pick a major holiday near where he'll, he'll be back and you're like, okay, well, if we just make it to that. And I feel right. like that can be dangerous because I, I think it was one of our deployments. I might have been really young, but it's like, oh, he'll be home by Christmas. And then it got extended and he wasn't home by Christmas. And right. that can just be like a little more crushing if you like try to associate it with that holiday and then the holiday's ruined and then it's awful and everyone's sad. But, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's part of it. I feel like it's just natural to be like, oh, if I just make it to there, then everything will be fine. Right. And so mm -hmm. like, you know, with my boyfriend being stationed overseas, cause since he's mm -hmm. a Marine, it's like, you know, you make it to this day and then you're like, oh, he'll be home soon. And then like, you make yeah. it to this day. And then it's like, you know, you have those little milestones in between and it's like, okay, well you have to make it to this or you have to make it through mm -hmm. this. Like mine was school. <laughs> it's like, you have to make it through the midterms to make it to the finals. And then, like, mm -hmm. you know, you know, right. you just It's go like down. a long car drive. It's like driving to work 30 times, right? Yeah, exactly. You just break it into chunks. <laughs> <laughs> and my, you know, cause I commute to school. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, okay, if I make it over the bridge, then, you know, I'm like 20, I'm like 30 minutes away. And then I make it to this street. And I'm like 10 minutes away. And then you exactly. know, I finally get to pull into the parking garage. And then, you know, you have to break it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looking at the journey ahead just as a whole, it can be it's just too intimidating, I feel like, especially for a kid who doesn't necessarily have that concept of time yet. And yeah, and then you also add on to that the responsibility that you have as a child of trying to keep in touch with a parent that's so far away. I mean, I remember whenever my mm -hmm. dad was gone when I was in middle school, uh, I could only email him. Like we got a right. phone call like rarely, and I think that was pretty common. So 
I'm not only going through school, going through all my responsibilities, having to step up with an household, but I'm also having to write these emails. Not that I didn't want to communicate with him, but like, it takes time to put in that sure. effort to communicate with someone, even if it's your dad, even if you want to talk to them so badly, it's, um, yeah, you have to learn to communicate and to keep that relationship with your parent. That's so important. And, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a big responsibility on a kid. Yeah. You have to, I mean, you learn you know, growing up the value of relationships, whether that be like, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, you know, mom, dad, family, brother, sister, whatever it may be, like, you Mm -hmm. know, that value in relationships. But then, you know, when, when you're all together, it's so easy to keep, you know, those, those relationships and like, yeah, because you see them all the time, see everyone, you, you can hang out, you can just pick up the phone, like me and my best friend, we literally plan things on the fly it's like Mm -hmm. the day before she's like you want to hang out tomorrow sure let's do that sometimes even day off like you know but we can do that because we're so close like location wise but then when you have someone on the other side of the world or even you know a couple states away because that happens too um you have to make it be intentional in those steps to say hey yeah okay i need to you know, respond to this email or, you know, make this phone call or whatever Mm -hmm. it may be. Um, And, you know, sometimes too, you can't necessarily just like plan it out. You have to be like, okay, do I send this email or do I do this thing? Like Mm -hmm. you have to kind of like prioritize things at some point. Yeah. And it takes time to write the emails. Once again, like, I don't dislike writing my dad emails when he's gone. It's just a huge step down, like going from living with him and seeing him every day and calling him when I need to, to just writing him and he'll get back to me in like a few days like that's just the means of communication is just so much different that um yeah. you're really not used to especially if you're like 10 years old like that's just that's unheard yeah. of for a kid really and like in 2011 like i mean he would email my mom but the only way of communication i had with him was over uh, we wrote letters and yeah. so i had there was one letter that i got from him um within the time period and i'm sure i wrote him like hundreds of letters but I got one letter, you know, in that time frame. Yeah. And so like, that was, that was like the one time I heard from him within four months. Like, I'm sure my mom would say things, That's... you know, sometimes, but I mean, mm-hmm. 2011, like not to make <laughs> us seem old here. Um, but like, we didn't really have technology then. Like tech, not we did, but it's degree, not, right? yeah. yeah, it's not the same that we have right now. And like now, like, I mean, we're over zoom, like, before 2020 who who even knew zoom existed right so no i did not i remember we exactly. used to use we used to do skype when we couldn't i think skype was we around for a little skype, bit um we had external webcam that we put on top of the computer <laughs> facetime and mm-hmm. you know things like that like you just don't think about those things um until you you know you're looking back on it and you're like yeah well, why couldn't have someone just invented Skype or, you know, FaceTime or whatever a sure. little sooner, you know? Yeah, absolutely. It's, I don't know, there's just so many challenges and just the stress on the family that I think it puts is yeah. you can't, and it cannot be said enough. Just like having, you know, so like you, your mom and your sister, you know, you just, everyone has to step up immediately. Like it just happens overnight. One night you have your dad there who's fulfilling his role and all his responsibilities. And the next day it's, you're on your own and you have to fill that somehow. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, something that I was able to do is I found some other mentors, thankfully in my life, some teachers or just like some other um, Marines that lived in my neighborhood that were kind of can fill in like here and there, not replace my dad in any way, but like, like substitute. That was just really important for me. Whether it's just like throwing the baseball with me or just like doing things I used to do with my dad that, you know, just made it easier for me to get through day to day. Yeah. And like, you know, I, because I went to a public school, I didn't go to the military school. The closest base was like four hours away. Um, and you know, like I said, we were reserve. So it was definitely a smaller community of military mm-hmm. around, gotcha. but all the teachers in my school, they understood like they, um, my music teacher, she was just the best. Um, mm-hmm. she was, her husband was military. And yeah. so I, and he was on deployment at the time. Yeah. So like her and I connected, she would come um, and visit me and make sure I was Mm -hmm. doing okay. And like all those kinds of things. And then um, she would get a, when my dad got hurt, she got me and my sister a little care package of like things um, to keep us busy. And then, 
the military community that we did have, like, because mm-hmm. it was so small, we all just connected together. Um, and, you know, a lot of the spouses that, you know, were around their, you know, husband or wife was also deployed too. So yeah. they understood, they knew, mm-hmm. you know, it's kind of a, you know, you kind of lot rely on everyone around you yeah. to, you know, hold you together and keep you keep you Absolutely. together and you're keeping them together too in the same sense. Yeah. That's one of my biggest pieces of advice. Absolutely. Is that you look for other people who are in the military community. That's really your best option. Yes. Just other people who like truly understand. Um, not that that's the only option, but it's just, it's just a little bit easier for them to relate to. And yeah. I think that just asking for that help can be difficult sometimes. Cause I feel like military families, they're kind of told whenever they move to a place, you know, you kind of want to be an independent because you're like always yeah. on your own. So it's like your family against the world. I always feel like, like we're just getting stationed from place to place. And it's just kind of us having to adapt to our environments together. It's the family that's kind of doing everything. And then all of a sudden you need help. And that's just, that's a really hard thing to say sometimes is admitting that you need someone else to, to fill in or give you a ride sometimes. And um, it can make a world of a difference, make things so much easier for you. But sometimes you just have to admit that. Yeah. And it's even hard, you know, I mean, my dad retired in 2014. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's been eight years now since he retired. Um, and so it's still even hard. I mean, the military kind of establishes that in you that you cannot ask for help, like that you can, but like, don't ask for help, like try and figure it out on yourself. And if you Mm -hmm. can't figure it out on yourself, then ask for help that's me now. Like I just yeah. don't ask for help. I do everything. On Same. My own. I, yeah. And you know, that's, mm-hmm. it's great. It's great. I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I'm very independent. I'm very stubborn. Mm-hmm. And so oh, that's, yeah. just, that's independent just to a detriment for sure. Exactly. Like, I mean, the other day, um, we were putting a box up in the garage on the, like, yeah. the top shelf and my mom was like, do you need help? And I was like, no, 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 I've got it. It was a heavy <laughs> box. And so like, I was putting it up on the shelf lo and behold it falls behind me and like you know it hits my head on the way down and she's like you should have just asked for help I was like no I got it it was just like a wrong move (laughs) yeah no one headache later you know you know you should ask for help sometimes Mm -hmm. but in the moment you're like I've got it I've got it I've got it and then until it hits you on the head exactly literally what a metaphor you know (laughs) (laughs) until it hits you on the head you know that's when you realize like oh I need to ask for help. And then, you know, when we actually had put the box up there, my mom was like, no, I'm helping you whether you want it or not. So, you know, and sometimes you have that like forced help and you, Mm -hmm. you don't want it, but you're like, okay, I have to take it because, you know, this person's not going to, you know, in a sense, go away unless, you know, I take their help. And sometimes sometimes it's better for you. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously. For sure. But I do think that on the other side of that, military kids do just grow a lot during those deployments. It's kind of like yes. almost like the silver lining to it is that they grow up so much and become so mature and so self-reliant. And those are things that most kids don't learn until they like they're 18 years old and they leave the house and they do yeah. live on their own for the first time. That's when they learn to be self-reliant and independent and you know provide for themselves a lot of the time. But military kids, they're kind of taking in these lessons much earlier just because their family's going through this drastic change on the spot. So I feel like that's, that's one thing you can kind of take away from that and embrace is like, Hey, you know what? I, this, this sucks. It really does. But Mm -hmm. there's going to be times like this in life later on that I'm kind of prepared for more so than normal kids. Not that we are normal, but you know what I'm saying? (laughs) (laughs) There's sometimes that you look back on it too. And you're like, you know, at least I do. And it's like, I missed out on my childhood, you know, Mm -hmm. to an extent because, you know, you grow up so fast. Um, but I've always been that way. Like looking at it, you know, even when, you know, my dad had that seven year break in service, it was like, mm-hmm. I, you know, I gained the nickname little mama because I was just a little mom to everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, again, it's an older, oldest child thing too, I think, but like you take that, that role, you know, yeah. you didn't even select it, but mm-hmm. you know, you take on that role and you have to kind of adapt to it. And then the military on top of that, you grow even more um, and mature even quicker. And then, I mean, like I said, it kind of sucks that you lose out on some of your childhood to an mm-hmm. extent, but you make the best of it. And like, we had a playground at the back of our house in Texas. Like there was, mm-hmm. 
you know, we could walk out our back door and there was a huge playground. So like, you know, you, you get those little moments that, you know, you just be a child, Yeah. but then you have those moments where it's like, okay, no, I'm, I'm nine, but I have to act like I'm 16. <laughs> and, yeah, you, sometimes, know, yeah. you know, you have to kind of put yourself in those uh, positions and you're held to so much higher of a standard because right. like one thing is if you get in trouble in school your service member gets in trouble too like they right. hear it from it's the a bad reflection that, sometimes yeah yeah so like I mean not that I ever did but you know I know people who did and it, it sucks yeah. but you know I I wouldn't trade it for the world because I you know it's so much easier now going through life and going through college and stuff and seeing all these people out partying and, you know, doing whatever. And not that that's necessarily a bad thing. Like you have to live a little bit too. Yeah. And, you know, I go to events and stuff uh, occasionally, uh, but it's definitely, you know, you're more independent, you're more self-reliant. Mm -hmm. uh, you know how to schedule out, you know, you know, yeah. you have the schedule that you can rely on and be schedule oriented and whatever the case may be. But I mean, you got to take it with a grain of salt sometimes too and be like, mm -hmm. this is great. Like, you know, you have to yeah. live in the moment and find the best of it too. Mm -hmm. Something I remember communicating with my dad while he was gone was I only wanted to share good news with him a lot of the times. Is mm -hmm. like, I always wanted him to not have to worry about me or worry about my mom and sister and I. And right. I always wanted to just tell him the good things, especially on the phone, because you only have like so much time with him and you're like, just get all the great things going out of the way. And you don't really yeah. want to, like, it feels like you, you don't want to burden them. You a don't want to complain. Yeah, you mm -hmm. don't want to complain about anything. Exactly. Because like, they're going, they're going through it. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Say the least. So you don't want to like throw on, like all your problems seem so minuscule in the grand scheme of things, which can right. also be kind of damaging if you just like kind of tell yourself, oh, like the problems I face or the battles I come across, they don't matter as much because mm -hmm. my dad's deployed, which is like, sounds like the silliest thing ever, but that's really how you feel a lot of times when you're a military kid. So I think that circles back to our podcast and stuff and uh, you know, great <laughs> yeah, military programs sure. so teens can talk about their problems and uh, not, not feel ashamed or feel uh, that it's too small to be talked about. Right. And not like, you know, saying anything bad about the military mm -hmm. at all, because I love the life I live. I love, yeah you know, everything about it. But sometimes those problems can stem from the military child life. Mm -hmm. You know, those deployments are struggles and, you know, moving is a struggle and whatever the case may be, it's a struggle. Yeah. And so while it's like, this is great and all, it can cause a struggle too. And, you know, be a problem in its own self um, where, you know, and it's hard going into a civilian school and being like, oh yeah, my dad's deployed. Like, yeah, you know, and then them being like, oh, you don't have your dad. Okay. What is that like? Or, you, you know, you have those people who like, how do I say this? They, you know, kind of surround you and they, to the point where it's suffocating and they're like, oh, here's this, here's this here, you know, sure. and giving you all this stuff where you're like trying to be like a super support system where it's like, mm -hmm. okay, back off like i need some space yeah. too like i've got this like you know what i'm saying like yeah it's it's I, just that that thing that it's like don't be too supportive but be supportive you know it's, be supportive yeah, it's a hard thing to ask sometimes. yeah <laughs> yes that goes back to asking for help mm -hmm. like sometimes yeah. you you have to ask for it yeah. and you don't want it forced but mm -hmm. you know i mean whatever sometimes it's it's that people don't understand too absolutely you know and you have to live the life to understand it and understand mm -hmm. what, you know, another military family needs. And again, going back to that military community, it was always better than a civilian community too. Yeah. Especially, I mean, just for military kids. Yeah. That's just the community that understands you and you should embrace it, even yes. though it comes with all of its different quirks and whatnot in the military community and everyone's, you know, it's... It's a strange group of people sometimes just because the lives we live, you're just like constantly <laughs> moving around and meeting new people. And, um, but it's, it also feels so small a lot of the times. Like I can't even t tell you how many different times it's like someone that knew someone else or like, oh, that you know so-and-so, mm -hmm. so do I. That happens all the time in the military community. So it's good just to make connections and uh, to meet as many people as you can for sure. Never burn bridges. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's very true. <laughs> and just, yeah, Never try, try to keep bridges. the bridges. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... You don't have to like be mm -hmm. best friends with everyone, but you just be on good terms because you never know when you're gonna be in their class like three years from now. And it's like, exactly. oh hey, we oh, used to hey. live here together. I hated you, but now you're <laughs> the only person I know. So I guess we're only best friends. Exactly. 
And yeah. I mean, who knows? You could end up turning out to be best friends in the end of it. But yeah, never been. Yeah. Conscious. There's been several people where like I knew them in one place and then they're, you know, they just pop up in Okinawa or something. I'm like, hey, you, we were in the same regard, third grade class. Exactly. Yep. You never know. Absolutely. So I want to ask, whenever your dad was injured, do you remember at the time the impact on your family? Because that's, I mean, that's a very unique challenge to go through. What was that like, if you remember specifically just, you know, being at home and getting that news, what what was that like for you? Yeah, so um, it's kind of weird. So we mm-hmm. just came up on 10 years. And so yeah. what I did is basically I wrote my entire life out um, in an Instagram kind of, I did a uh, like story thing for it. Mm-hmm. And literally like the details that I remember are like, Like that is a moment in my life that I remember so vividly, Mm -hmm. you know, you have those vivid memories and then, you know, this is one of them. So take you back to the short version of Mm -hmm. the story. Um, But my mom, uh, we were working on getting a care package together to mail out and, um, it was like right around Christmas time. Uh, it was November 20th was the day he got injured. And so right around Christmas time, uh, well, I mean, Thanksgiving was the following Thursday. So I mean, Thanksgiving yeah. time, but sure. you know, when you're looking at deployments, like we already baked Christmas cookies to mail over, like you have to kind of plan yeah. that in advance. Um, because you have to, you know, send the, be able to say, okay, well, it's going to take a couple of weeks to get there. And then mm-hmm. to get there by Christmas, you have to mail it out by, you know, Thanksgiving and whatever. Mm-hmm. But so we were at Sam's club, uh, we were getting, you know, easy mac and cheese and ramen yep. and, you know, all kinds of things. I remember walking up the aisles and, you know, just grabbing things. We grabbed the lollipops and, you know, just little random things. Yeah. And so we were, um, we had gotten home. My mom remembers, uh, you know, she had to get gas. And so we stopped at Sam's club, uh, while we were there and we got gas and she remembers just feeling this this like pain in her chest like she just knew something wasn't right and she was like she had to talk herself down she's like he's okay he's okay like he's on a mission right now like I know I know he's coming back and you know I'll hear from him in a couple days and whatever um well we got home and then there was a phone call um because cell phones weren't Cell phones weren't a thing in 2011. Yeah. Like, let's let's be real here. They were just coming around. Mm-hmm. Um, it was again. on your home phone? Yes. So on yeah. our home phone, there was one missed phone call. Yeah. And it happened to be from the same minute that she felt that. It happened wow. to be the same minute that that uh, phone call came through. Um, and so the phone rang. She, she saw that we had a missed call and she was like, okay, we need to unload the car and then we'll get to that. Yeah. And then the phone rang again. Well, I'm standing in the living room. Um, the way we had it, like the living room and dining room were like just one big hall. Like it was all very kind of open. Yeah. Um, and so I was standing in the living room. She was standing in the dining room, maybe like six feet away from me. And she answered the phone and fell to her knees, like sobbing. And I was like, uh-oh, <laughs> like, you know, being nine years old, it's like, what just happened? Yeah. And so um, she handed me her cell phone because she did have a cell phone. Um, she got the new iPhone, like the iPhone 4 when it came out. Remember, um, that was the thing, yeah. It, yeah. So she handed me her phone and she was like, go call Lina, which is her best friend. And um, mm-hmm. dad was deployed with her fiance. So she was like, go call Lina, tell her that her and Joey need to get to the house as soon as yeah. possible. And Joey was... Um, military also she was like tell her that something happened to daddy and that she just needs to get over the house so I ran to my bedroom and I Mm -hmm. called her I was like something happened to daddy like you need to get over the house as soon as possible Uh, something happened with his leg um I, I heard the word amputation going around you know, I say it was my brain protecting myself yeah you know because sometimes your mind can do that Mm -hmm. and so I, the last movie we saw as a family was Dolphin Tail. And yeah. so, oh. you know, <laughs> right? Yeah. Full circle here. Yeah. Um, so last movie we saw as a family was Dolphin Tail. 
And so I had heard the word amputee. I knew what it meant. Like I knew yeah. it, but at the moment, my brain did not, the two, the word and the definition did not link. And so I told her something happened to daddy something happened to his leg, like amputee, like, you know, things like that. And I mean, obviously she knew then at that point. And um, so they got over to the house, my sister and I, um, the next thing was my mom didn't want us there when everything unfolded like because okay. I mean all we had was the phone call so she didn't like from the beginning she knew if something were to happen she didn't want us there from the, for you know everything to unfold and so she had a plan with her another one of her friends that you know she would keep us on our schedule she would take us to school like you know things like that and so it was, all right, get your school bags together. It was a Sunday night. Get your school bags together. Uh, she had a basket of laundry that had yet to be folded. Mm -hmm. And so she like, you know, we threw our stuff in there and me and her were out the door. And so we don't remember. We weren't there to be able to remember everything that went down. We All we knew is we were going to go stay with Megan and Joe for a couple nights. Yeah. And, you know, we would see mom again soon. Like okay. that was it. And so we were out the door. It wasn't until Thursday. Like I said, that was, that happened on a Sunday. We didn't see my mom again until Thursday, which wow. was Thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, so like, you know, Megan and Joe kept us busy. We were doing school. We were, you know, doing fun things. We didn't know if we would see mom for Thanksgiving or not. We were either going to go with Megan's uh, mm -hmm. family or we were going to go with mom. And so what's going on through your head during that week though? Like that must I be. I didn't know what happened. Yeah. I still didn't know what happened. It was, mm -hmm. you know, Monday to Thursday. I had no clue. Mm -hmm. And uh, all I knew was that we were kind of trying to stay on a normal schedule as possible. And something happened to dad. And that was like, you know, it. Um, Megan wrote letters to our teachers. So our teachers kind of knew what was going on. So like, yeah. um, you know, if we weren't acting right uh, if we were kind of, you know, falling behind in a sense or, yeah, that's... you know, sad yeah. or, you mm -hmm. know, like we were having a hard time, you know, that we would understand. And I still have not, I don't know what she put in that letter. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't get to read it. She walked me into school and she handed it to my teacher herself. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I mean, I definitely would have opened it and read it and she probably yeah. knew that too. Um, so you know, it was just that kind of unknown at that mm -hmm. period. Like, um, and I remember always thinking like, is dad okay? Is dad okay? Like, mm -hmm. like what's going on? And then, you know, Thanksgiving came around and we finally saw mom again. And that's when she told us what happened. Mm -hmm. And the way she told us is, I mean, she didn't even know how to tell us. Cause how do you tell an eight and nine year old that something happened to their dad? Like, you know, no, thankfully know. we didn't lose him, but mm -hmm. how do you tell an eight and nine year old something happened to their dad? And so my mom was on the phone with my dad one day when he was in Germany and, you know, so many medications, like he doesn't even remember with saying this, but, um, he told her if a dolphin can do this, I can do this, you know, going back to dolphin tail. And so she's like, that's how I'm going to tell the girls. Um, and so she, she sat us down on the couch, you know, uh, she sat in between me and my sister and we had, uh, some other friends there who were, you know, there to support, uh, her and, you know, support us through it too. And she looked at us and she said, you know how winter lost her tail? Well, daddy lost his leg. And, you know, that was the main injury. There are so many other injuries too. Um, but that was like the big one, like, you know, to break it to us. And, you know, we cried, like I knew something was up. Um, and so like we cried and then, uh, one of the friends looked at us and goes, well, you know, he'll get a flipper. Like he'll be like winter, he'll get a flipper. So we, you know, we started making, uh, turning that negative situation into a positive one, you know, in the best sense we can. Um, so yeah, it was definitely a crazy week. Yeah. And then, you know, Thanksgiving, everyone came over to our house, you know, brought food, um, you know, whatever, you know, we all just hung out. Um, that night we got to talk to dad on the phone, you know, because of all the medications, like, you know, it's hard to understand him, yeah. um, and things like that, but it was definitely nice to be able to hear his voice again. 
you know, I'm even sure. if it, yeah. I just, I mean, just like the week the of the unknown, I can't imagine where you're yeah. just kind of left to your imagination and you're probably, you know, that fear of the worst case scenario and just like creeping in your head. I can't imagine. Yeah. And, you know, from five years old, they, they told my mom, they took me in to get uh, some test for school, like, mm-hmm. and they said, do you know, she has anxiety? Like, and so like just anxiety of, you yeah. know, sitting there and wondering and, you know, mm-hmm. like what's going to happen? Like, is he going to make it, you know, things like yeah. that? Cause you just, you just don't know. Yeah. And then, um, it was a month before I saw him again. Mm-hmm. Um, so he got injured November 20th. We didn't see him until December 22nd. And my mom left uh, a week after the injury. So she left the following Sunday and to fly to Texas to see him. And she didn't want to bring us with her because she didn't know what she was walking into. Yeah. Um, And so she kind of wanted to, you know, evaluate what was going on before we came. And so we stayed with a friend and then um, we all flew down to Texas and that walking into the hospital room was insane like yeah. you know you see you see the service member getting on the bus or whatever it may be however they're leaving mm-hmm. in their uniform you know exactly the way you knew them and then you walk into a hospital room full of bandages like you know wires all over the place and you're like yeah who is this person <laughs> like you know you don't yeah. know you know but you know I still knew like you know I knew he was my dad Like I Mm -hmm. knew that, like that was, that was obvious. And, you know, he didn't change, like, you know, he still had a sense of humor Mm -hmm. and, you know, all of that. My sister, she looked at him. The first thing she said to him was next time, watch where you're walking (laughs) because he stepped on the ID. (laughs) She's like, well, next time, watch where you're walking. So after that too, it's just like, you know, oh, we've always made the best of it and gone from there in that sense. But, you know, you just have to kind of take it day by day too. Like, Mm -hmm. I mean, we're still going through treatment and recovery and, you know, all sorts of things because that's, that's the life we live now. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, from that moment, my mom became a caregiver. We became a caregiver to, you know, be able to provide for him. I stepped up to help my younger sister, especially when it was just me and her were like the only family we had. Yeah. And so, and, you know, living with friends is great. And they treated us like, you know, like we were their own. Um, but, you know, it's not the same having your own family. And I mean, right. like they, they are family now too, but it's not the same. And so you have to, I had to step up to help her and make sure, yeah. you know, she was okay and things like that too. And so it's just this huge thing that it, it changes your life around yeah. and, I mean- you know, in the end, it changed for the better because, you know, we would not be where we are today if that didn't happen. But, you know, it's a struggle too at the same point. Right. I mean, we were talking about stepping up in terms of responsibility. Like that's a whole different level. Like that's yeah. that's something that you can never plan for and never really expect in a lot of ways. So, yeah. Yeah, I it's imagine. definitely something that, you know, never, nobody ever wants to happen. Yeah. But, you know, we were you know, so many people walked over that same exact area that he did. And he was just, he was the one who hit the pressure plate, right. And it went off and, you know, it just so happened to be that way. And I mean, it definitely was hard yeah. transitioning. Um, but I mean, we figure it out and I mean, we still have to figure stuff out today. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's still difficult and hard sometimes. Um, but, you know, I mean, we made it work because, you know, yeah. that's just what you do for family. Right. And I mean, mm-hmm. it's our life and it's, it's great. And we love it now too. But I mean, you have to think more things too, like, especially like, because, you know, say going to Disney, we, we love going to Disney, especially yeah. living, living in Florida. So we go to Disney and like, you have to say, okay, well, 
you know, this ride is perfect because you can bring your wheelchair on the ride. Mm -hmm. Well, this ride, you know, and most of the time he is able to transfer and, you know, walk short distances and things like that to be able to transfer um, if he's, if he's in his chair, but, you know, sometimes he can't. And so like, you have to pick the rides with the wheelchair cart yeah. and you can't do roller coasters because you can't transfer. And, you know, you have to just think that extra step sometimes too. And I wouldn't wish that on anyone, mm-hmm. you know, to have to go through that, but it makes you stronger. It makes you, I mean, it sucks having to step up sometimes, but you know, it's made me who I am today and I yeah. would not trade it for the world. Yeah. I mean, that just must be such a different approach to everything you do. I can't imagine yeah. how that changed your mindset at such a young age. Cause I mean, when you're a kid, you're so innocent and to have mm-hmm. that, that sort of thing happen to someone in your family. Like I just, just like the way you see the world, like everything is just so much different. I imagine. And like, yeah, did you, you find yourself like, so que- yeah. More. Did you find yourself questioning like what's really important? Like, I can't imagine staying dedicated to things like schoolwork or like extracurricular things because like all those things seem so minuscule all of a sudden whenever you have something like that happen I assume yeah so I mean having that month where it was kind of just me Mm -hmm. and my sister you know school was definitely the most important thing you Mm -hmm. know at that point and then moving to Texas the most important thing um I think my mom made sure it was the most important thing too is keeping us on a schedule because, yeah. you know, being, having a weird schedule, I don't like that. <laughs> so mm-hmm. even from a young age, I did yeah. not like, like to be prepared for everything. Mm-hmm. I'm very type A, like, you know, plan everything out. And so having that schedule, you know, was great. But then, I mean, especially now, uh, because I know, you know, I'm 20, I just turned 20. I'll be moving out, you know, within the next couple of years, probably, And so it's like, do I go to those, you know, do I take the hour to drive to campus to do these events and then drive an hour back home? That's like my entire, it's like my entire day wasted, you know, not wasted, Mm -hmm. but, uh, or do I spend it at home with my family? You know, you have to make those decisions sometimes and that's hard. And, you know, even in the moment of, you know, being nine years old, it's like, okay, I have school. My life was literally, we lived in a hotel right across the street from the hospital and we went, uh, we woke up, we got on the bus, we went to school, we got off Mm -hmm. the bus, we walked over to the hospital, did our homework in the hospital and then walked back to the hotel and, you know, basically did it all over again. And so that was what was important at the time is, you know, spending time with my dad and how long were you doing that for? Uh, we did that for probably about a month, about a month. And Mm -hmm. then he was discharged from the hospital and he was in the hotel with us Mm -hmm. um, until we were able to get PCS. And, you know, that's a whole other thing because we were a reserve family. So they put us on 179 day orders instead of 180. So Mm -hmm. 180 is where they'd PCS you. So we were one day shy. Um, So they would not PCS us. And then, you know, 179 days come around, you renew the orders, you renew the orders instead of Mm -hmm. just, you know, long-term orders saying, you know, you're going to be here for quite a while. Um, So, you know, but we kind of lived in the hotel and then we finally got an exception of policy to PCS. But, you know, it's, you know, you prioritize family at that Mm -hmm. point too. And you do whatever you can to do that. And, you know, luckily I was so young that I didn't have to like, you know, do it myself but now it's like okay do I go with my friends do I do this event do I do this thing or do I you know even like with school like it's like you have to put school first you have to put your family Mm -hmm. first and then everything comes off it comes after that and so it's definitely uh, a challenge but it makes it easier kind of knowing like what I've been through and like you know technically my dad shouldn't even be here right now you know that's how catastrophic this incident was that he shouldn't even be here right now and so you know taking the value in that Mm -hmm. and you know remembering that and then putting that above all else too Mm -hmm. so you you can feel lucky in a way I'm sure like that's yes yes very lucky because I mean anything could have happened like anything could have happened one surgery could have went wrong or you know who knows and something could have happened 
but you know his life was spared you know our time as a family was spared and so it's at the point where too you make the most of it and that's one reason I actually chose to stay home for college Mm -hmm. because so I go to Florida Gulf Coast University and I got accepted into the University of Alabama Mm -hmm. and I had a full ride scholarship that would have paid for it too Mm -hmm. and so it's like do I go to Alabama which you know at you know, it was my dream to go there. Really? Or um, do I stay here and be with mm-hmm. my family? And at the time, COVID was happening too. So it made yeah. the decision a lot easier. Um, but, you know, I chose to stay home so I could stay with my family. I could live at yeah. home. Um, and I mean, it did and in the end make it easier with school and stuff. Um, and, you know, plans completely changed. Um, because, you know, if you're a college kid, you're nine times out of 10, you're going to change your major at least once. (laughs) (laughs) So it seems like, yeah, I said I was never going to change my major. Yeah. Second semester and changed my major, but what was your original major? Exercise science. Gotcha. I was an exercise science student and then Mm -hmm. I changed to health science. Okay. And then the following year I added a minor in marketing Mm -hmm. where like that year I added a minor in marketing, Mm -hmm. something like that. So, you know, things change, plans change, and, you know, it all kind of makes sense in the end. Like, it, you know, it sucks that I didn't go to Bama. Like, I would have loved to go to Bama. You know, it's a gorgeous campus. But, you know, I love my campus. I love, you know, I've had some incredible professors, you know. Like, Mm -hmm. everything just makes sense when you look at it from the perspective of where I am now and looking back on it all. Um, you can't see the future, which sucks because I, mm-hmm. I would like to see the future so I could plan it all out. Um, but, you know, looking back at it all, it all just makes sense. Yeah, I'm sure. And then you mentioned before the show, you'll be graduating next fall, right? I'll be Back graduating spring 23. In the spring. Yeah. Spring 23. Yeah. So I'm graduating a year early. Mm-hmm. Um, spring 23, and then I'll be going straight into my master's program yeah. at the University of Alabama. <laughs> so there you I'll go. still end up there anyways. Found your um, it's completely distant, so uh, mm-hmm. it's all online, but I can still, you know, go to campus and, you know, experience the yeah. way the campus is, uh, maybe once or twice. But uh, yeah, full online, I'll start that the following summer, go summer mm-hmm. spring summer fall and spring and then graduate spring 24 um and then within four years i'll have i mean technically my aa um, because you know i've already earned that um and you know most colleges don't just hand those out because it's like if you go to a four-year college you're going for a bachelor's you're not going Mm -hmm. for an aa but they told me to apply for it anyway so i did so you know i'll have my aa my bachelor's and my master's all in four years which is insane That's exciting. And a lot of people don't do that yeah it's very exciting yeah. I you know don't know what the future is going to hold um yeah. but master's in marketing with concentration in digital and social media mm-hmm. that's changing the world right now so yeah. what are you looking uh, forward to with that yeah yeah there's so many things that it's like it's just so exciting that you mm-hmm. know and I love healthcare. you know exercise science was my original thing um yeah. My first dream was to be an athletic trainer for the WWE. You know? yeah. <laughs> that was number one priority mm-hmm. um, when I came into college. But You, you know, didn't want to be a superstar? Nope. Just an athletic trainer. <laughs> I love the medical side of it. Anatomy yep. is my favorite thing ever. So, mm-hmm. um, but gotcha. marketing's up there now too. But, you know, there's so many things that it's like, there's so much that the future holds where it's like, it's just so exciting to see it all play out. Uh, like I said, I would like to plan it all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not always possible. Though, yeah. yeah. It's never possible really. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's so exciting. There's so much to look forward to and, you know, marketing runs the world, honestly. So <laughs> yeah, it really does. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Is there, um, any advice just generally that you want to give to military kids? I mean, you probably do this all the time on your podcast, but is there anything that, you know, maybe you've come across a lot when you're talking to military kids past and uh, present that you want to say, Hey, this is what I've noticed. And this is a message that you might have for them. Yeah. I would say, you know, I ask this question all the time and I yeah. always say, I know it's a challenging question to answer. And I don't realize how challenging it is to answer myself. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is, uh, I would say, 
you know, take it day by day. You never know yeah. what's going to happen. Um, live in the moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like to plan everything, like I just said, but <laughs> you know, you have to live in the moment with the military. You yeah. cannot plan everything and expect it to go according to plan. You have to plan, have plan A through Z and hope one of them is going to work, right. <laughs> you know, hope yeah. you don't have to continue on after that. Um, but take it day by day, you know, yeah. live in the moment. You're, you know, a lot of people get to live in amazing places. I got to live in Texas and I loved yeah. it, you know. I love Cleveland, Ohio. A lot of people say they don't love Ohio, but I do. <laughs> um, you know, take it day by day. Live in the moment. Don't yeah. uh, don't let any experience go to waste. Like, right. you know, you're there for a reason. There's something happening that, you know, you're going to love or you're going to hate. And whatever that may be, whatever the case is, you know, don't mm-hmm. like live in the moment. Go with it. Like go yeah. with the flow. Like, There's only so much you can control, right? There's only yes. so much that you can really, so don't try to control everything. Just kind of do what yes. you can, I would say. Yes, for sure. And, you know, it's an incredible mm-hmm. life and I wouldn't trade it for anything. And I mean, don't waste yeah. out on it. Like, you mm-hmm. know, make friends, you know, do, do the little stupid things and, you know, try to have fun with it. Mm-hmm. Is there anything on your podcast that's upcoming that you're excited about or anything you want to share? I can give everyone the links and everything too. I'll make sure that's all in the description so everyone can check it out. Yeah. So, I mean, all the links are there. There's a link tree on Instagram too, um, yep. which has all the links. So if you don't want to yeah. share like 10 links, that may be an easier one. Easier. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that's there. Um, I can't really think of anything exciting. I'm excited to be done with school right now at this point. Mm So (laughs) I'm looking Mm -hmm, forward to that. Um, But yeah, there's so much uh, probably coming up. So I mean, just stay tuned. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. I always look forward to the summer. Absolutely. It's like you get a little more free time to focus on silly things like podcasting. It's not silly. It's just like, (laughs) it just always feels like a side thing that I just keep on dragging along. But, you know, I love doing it. I'm sure you really enjoy doing it. And uh, actually, one more question, one more question. You've talked to a lot of military brats that I've noticed, um, some older ones, like some lot more past military brats I noticed on your show. What is their view on current brats like, or what what are some things that you've noticed talking to them that might be different than military brats today, if if there's anything in particular? Yeah, I definitely think that, you know, hearing their stories versus current stories of military brats, it's definitely different. Uh, different perspectives it's you know they again going back to communication they wrote off letters like yeah you know now with friendships and stuff like we can just text people Mm -hmm. we can like you know instagram is a thing you know facebook you know all those things are you know real now and so with them you know that those older generations you know they didn't have that they relied Mm on you know the little technology they had if any along with letters and you know it would take weeks to get there because it's not like you can just drop a letter in the mailbox today and it's there you know the next day or you know in the same week especially if you're overseas yeah right um so it's definitely you know I noticed that a lot and then I mean like I just said with the advice to like living in the moment a lot of them you know because they didn't have the technology they weren't in their phones you know all the time yeah. Um, because they didn't have that. So they were forced to, you know, play outside or, you mm-hmm. know, experience. Play outside. It's like unheard of nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> right. So yeah. they didn't, they had, they had to do that. That was their mm-hmm. fun. Like when, you know, I try not to be on my phone all the time, it does not work all the time like that. But, you know, so many children are on their phones, like, yeah. you know, or mm-hmm. they have an iPad or an iPod or whatever. And that's great. You know, it keeps you entertained. Like, believe me, I love my phone. I wouldn't, I probably would not be living without it, but you yeah. know, they were forced to, you know, use their imagination and things. The like old that. fashioned way. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. So <laughs> they definitely had to do that. And I think that makes them stand out a little bit more too. Yeah. Um, not that, you know, our generation sucks or anything. Like I love our generation. Mm-hmm. I am our generation. Obviously be proud of it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. you know, it's just, you know, it's different times call for different measures and, yeah. you know, next generation is going to be totally different than our generation. Absolutely. Is too. And it's constantly evolving. And, 
mm-hmm. I think technology plays a huge role in it. Mm-hmm. Well, everyone should be looking forward to seeing that next generation on Grace of the Military Child podcast, because yeah. uh, I'm sure they're going to be there and you know, <laughs> we'll talk to all of them. You're going to tell them all of your old stories and they're going to think, oh, shit, what, what do you mean yeah. Instagram? No one uses Instagram oh, anymore. That's not cool. It'll go out of sure. style Can you imagine? Yeah. Oh, it's going to happen for sure. <laughs> Um, yes, I really appreciate you coming on, sharing your story, talking about deployments, and it's been it's been a lot of fun. You know, yes, just it has been. Thank you so much for having me. Yep, and I look forward. To, uh, we can do some more stuff, I'm sure, in the future. Um, yes. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, that would be awesome. Thank you. Yep, and I know that weather in Florida. It's been warm for quite a while. It's just now starting <laughs> to warm up here. But um, I hope I uh, hope you have a great day, and I'll catch everyone next week for another episode.